Welcome to another episode of Excel with Gabrielle. I'm your host, Gabrielle Jordan, and every Sunday at 7 p.m., I'll be giving motivational advice and entrepreneurial tips to young entrepreneurs and leaders just like you. So make sure to head over to my website, ExcelYouthMentoring.com, to subscribe to the Excel Youth Mentoring Institute. And don't forget to tell people about this because I wouldn't want anybody to miss anything. So on today's episode of Excel with Gabrielle, this fourth Sunday's industry leader guest is an author and media mogul maker, T.J. Mercer. With storytelling behind the camera for big companies such as ABC, NBC, OWN, Disney, DreamWorks, and so much more, as well as spending eight years doing the publicity for box office hits such as Shrek, The Incredibles, The Chronicles of Narnia, and once again, so much more, Ms. TJ is teaching people how to take their businesses and themselves from quiet behind the scenes to impactful in front of the camera with her Media Maverick Academy. So, get ready to hear some amazing advice on how you can do the same in this interview with Miss TJ Mercer. Let's go. Welcome, Miss TJ. Hi, Gabrielle. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for joining me on Excel with Gabrielle. I'm excited to jump into this interview and have these young people and these parents hearing all about you and what you have to offer in your business. I'm on Excel with Gabrielle. Yes. I'm on Excel <laughs> with Gabrielle. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> so let's jump in with starting about you. What got you started in the media industry? What sparked your interest? You know, what inspired you to get started? Well, I am a little country girl from a town called Jackson, Tennessee. It's in between Memphis and Nashville. I went to Howard University, which is in D.C., and I majored in television production. And my dream was to always work in Hollywood. So during my summers, I would come to Los Angeles and do an internship, go back and do another semester of school. And so when I graduated, uh, I moved here. And my first job was on the television show Extra 22 years ago. Still going strong, the show. I'm not there anymore. But And uh, from Extra, I went on The Tonight Show. I went on to work on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. So... Some of the moms watching are probably old enough to know that when the Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton scandal that has now kind of res- been resurrected uh-huh. uh, for this campaign season, uh, all of the skits that were on The Tonight Show at that time were my work. Oh, wow. And, yeah. So from there, I went to uh, doing the DVD and publicity genre for films. Uh-huh. Where I did everything from the sh- from Shrek to the Chronicles of Narnia to Cars. I love that to the- movie. I love the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> you know, Aslan, yes, yes. It's one of my favorite, favorite projects. And after I spent some time there, I ended up moving into the reality TV genre where I worked on everything from The Bachelor to I, Swamp I People to My Cat from Hell to R&B Divas to L.A. Hair and a whole bunch of other stuff I've actually forgotten. So behind the camera, I spent a little over 20 years crafting stories for some of the biggest shows on television. Absolutely. That is amazing. And I was when I was doing some research on you, just seeing the list, long list of things that you've worked on, it's absolutely wonderful and amazing. So that's why I'm really excited to have you on here because you are obviously a, a, a professional in your field, your field and, and well, yeah, an industry well, leader. See. I don't see, I don't know if I'm going to call myself a professional, but <laughs> some people don't think I act quite professional. <laughs> you don't have to act professional to be a professional. But, the beauty, was... of, but the beauty of what I did, I was always in a closed room. And, and for your viewers, let me just explain what I did. As a TV editor, um, what I did was, you know, if you take a, like a, a reality show like The Bachelor, they shoot tons and tons and tons of footage, of hun- you know, hundreds of hours of footage. I'm that person in that 10 by 10 room that's like the size of a prison cell. Yeah. But I take all of that footage and essentially drill it down into a 42 minute episode or a 47 minute episode, depending Which on what network. Struggle, probably. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I didn't have be professional because I, I worked alone quite a bit 
And some days I would just wear a little bit more clothes one step higher than my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I know a lot of I know a lot of kids, including myself, like to be comfortable when we do things. So I think that's good to understand and know the balance between, you know, what settings to be professional and to dress professional and to act professional mm -hmm. and when it's okay to be fun and free and be your complete and total self. Um, right. And so I also want to ask you about the academy that you started, the Media Maverick Academy, correct? Mm -hmm. um, what got you to start that? What, you know, what um, inspired you to jump into that area? Okay, so in order for me to honestly answer that question, I need to just put out a bit, a bit of a disclaimer. My belief system is that I'm a Christian. So I hear from God. I talk to God. He and I, we roll daily. And so in 2014, I started getting the, the semblance that my career behind the camera was over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I'd written, a, by that time, I think I'd written a couple of books. Mm -hmm. And my, I, I become more active in social media. I started speaking quite a bit. And so it just got to the point where I had to make a choice. Uh, between, you know, being locked down on a show for four or five months and not, um, and not, you know, being out there in the market speaking. Mm -hmm. And around the end of 2014, I got the clear message, your time is up. Mm -hmm. So your next show is going to be your last show. It's time for you to retire. Now, here's the thing, Gabrielle. I retired not knowing what the heck I was going to do. <laughs> Like, I have no clue. Okay, so you want me to retire. You want me to What is it that we're we're going to do? Because Wells Fargo is still going to ask for their mortgage payment, you know. Exactly. Uh, the, the utility company is still going to want me to pay for the utilities in the house. And so what are we going to do? So about two or three months went by with me kind of stressing. Like, you know, what am I doing? And so a... Generic conversation with a good friend of mine who was she was a uh, she's a, a entrepreneur and she was planning this big event mm -hmm. and so I told her you should do some media you know and here's what it could look like and I just kind of spitball you know this is what you could do here's what your segment would be this is what I want you to do and she kind of held the phone and I was like what are you there she goes do you know what you just did and I was like no, you want to tell me? <laughs> and so she said, you just did that in like eight minutes. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to figure out how to package that and sell it. I'm ready to go on Facebook right now and tell people that you're coming out with this amazing new program and they have to get in line right behind me because I'm your first client. Wow. And she actually went and did that. <laughs> it's like, I, next thing I know, I'm getting a notification from Facebook of what my, my friend, her, her name is J-Mac has done and I'm like, well I can't make her a lie. I've gotta I gotta go create this thing. Exactly. And so in July of 2015, Media Mavericks Academy was born. And essentially what it is is I use my my 20 years of expertise to be the secret weapon for authors, experts, coaches, entrepreneurs, because I teach them how to book themselves in the media without a publicist and without a celebrity. And my Mavericks and I have done everything from like ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, uh, Huffington Post, the Steve Harvey Show, Dr. Oz, the doctors. Uh, I have a couple of Mavericks who just got in town late last night to do a huge national show that I can't talk about uh, right now until the show comes out. And so, yeah, that's how I got started. And I'm just, I'm over the moon, excited and happy. I love working with with heart-centered yeah. um, authors and experts because I like to teach them how to take their message to the masses. That's really important. I do understand that. I know with um, the growth of both, I think for all of my companies, um, specifically for Gabrielle Jordan and Jules Jordan, we tried to go the PR route and we realized that we needed a bit more organic growth, and but we needed we need a different way of growing our companies. The PR route wasn't working for us and I think that that's really important um, where, what you're bringing to them. You kind of help them, people to cultivate their message so that it really reaches the audience as well as even the producers so that, you know, they're, they're, it's money. When they hear the, the words and the, everything is kind of cultivated perfectly in a way that really attracts the audience and even the people behind the scenes. Is that correct? Yes, I call it my process. What I call it is called I drill down your genius. Mm. So say, for instance, 
You, you've been an entrepreneur since you were nine years old, right? Yes, yes. So, and you're 16 now? I am. Okay, so for seven years, you have accumulated all of this knowledge mm-hmm. that I now, if I were your coach, I've got to drill down to three minutes or five minutes. Of course, TV interview is three to five minutes. Mm-hmm. Radio interviews are typically a little longer, 15 to 20 minutes. But essentially, that's a lot of information mm-hmm. that we have to drill down, still have an impact on the audience to then get the audience from the TV screen or the speakers to your website so that you can have influence over them there, serve them there, so then that translates to income. And so my approach is more of a targeted, we decide, what I teach my media matters is, you decide what city you want to hit, and then I'm going to teach you how to actually go after that particular city if it's a fit. Whereas a publicist, what you're paying a publicist to do is to always be looking for opportunities to position you, which is why, you know, you're going to need two to four thousand dollars a month because that's a lot of time. Yes, I'm more of a targeted approach. And that's really yeah. Again, that's that's really smart and real and really needed, I think. Um, So I know that the entertainment industry is obviously a very competitive world. Um, That's very known both in front of the camera and behind the camera. For you, what were some of the, I guess, obstacles and challenges that you had to face in order to get into this world? And what are like the, some of the do's and don'ts you would say that you had to face and had to figure out um, throughout the process of, of getting to where you are today and even throughout the media? I think the lesson that, that really helped me is I was confident, as a TV editor, I was really confident in my ability to tell the story. Mm-hmm. And I was unapologetic and I was diligent about mastering my craft. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the best. And when I left the industry on that side of the camera, I sat back and thought there's no show that I ever wanted to edit. I'm leaving at the top of my game. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving knowing that I did everything that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I left knowing that still some of my producers are begging me to come out of retirement. Mm -hmm. The second thing that And this can go for, you know, a lot of industries. But Hollywood, as big as it is, it's very small. Mm -hmm. And your reputation is crucial. Producers go from show to show to show to show. We typically, as an editor, we're not at one company a long time. We jump from show to show to show. That's just the nature of our business. Mm -hmm. So if people are jumping from show to show to show, Mm -hmm. then we are talking. If someone looks at my resume and my resume says I was on The Bachelor and they're looking to hire me for uh, uh, Bar Rescue, Mm -hmm. then... If they see that, okay, I have a friend that was on The Bachelor. Let me call and find out. So do you know this editor named T.J. Mercer? You have to protect your reputation at all costs. That's really, really important. That's something I definitely try to stress with people because the biggest thing is understanding that everything you do has your name on it. It's, again, exactly. as you said, it goes across many different careers, many different avenues, but everything you do, you don't know who's watching you, you don't know you know, what's happening on the outside, so you have to make sure that you are sticking with who you are and you're presenting yourself in the best light possible. Absolutely. So another question I want to add, kind of working with that was, how did you uh, build your reputation? You know, because a lot of people starting from, you know, nothing from zero, how did you get to a point where you're able to have a reputation to share with people? Goes back to mastering my craft and honoring my word. Um, when I first started at Extra, I would I was on the night crew at Extra, and so I worked at night from six p.m. to two to three o'clock. No, okay, so I worked from six p.m. to two a.m. for my regular shift. And then from 2 a.m. to like 5 a.m., mm-hmm. I would stay over and practice and put in, and work on other stuff. Right. And then I would come in early the next day so one of the editors who was more seasoned than I could critique what I had stayed late to do. Uh-huh. I was committed that I was going to get the experience 
no matter what. Right. Then when I started branching out, I would work an extra from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., mm -hmm. leave there, go grab a few hours of sleep, and then go to the Tonight Show by 8 a.m. in the morning and do a whole full other shift. Right. I was committed to mastering my craft. Mm -hmm. And so when when it's just one of those things, and I loved what I did. I loved my career. I loved being creative. So it didn't feel like work. Right. You know, and so when whenever I was hired on a show, it was simply to know that I'm there to collaborate and to give you the best possible show that, you know, Twitter or Facebook, everybody blows up talking about. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's really important because specifically understanding that for young people, something that I think people the minds of the people don't have at this point is that or people have at this point is that. You're supposed to have fun when you're a kid. Then you start thinking about your career and your life as an adult. Um, and so when young people do start to grow and start to you know, have a business or something at a young age, it's this automatic thought like, oh, maybe I should have more time as a kid than I should as, you know, working on this life and this career. But I, as you were saying, being dedicated to this thing that you love, but to being dedicated to your growth, being dedicated to your passion in order to succeed starts really even at a young age. You know, I'm 44 years old, and the other side of what you just said is when you move into adulthood, don't forget to still play. That's very true. Protect if I, if if your your audience hears nothing else, mm -hmm. protect your playtime. Mm -hmm. Your imagination changes the world. Your imagination creates solutions to problems mm -hmm. your imagination solves it gives you cures for diseases mm -hmm. your imagination will be the next apple that will revolutionize how we do life mm -hmm. your imagination comes out in your playtime mm -hmm. so don't get so busy and i, I just learned this gabrielle mm -hmm. i i just learned this that don't get so busy in the business that you forget to allow yourself time to Very play. True. Very true. And let your imagination just go rampant and wild and carve out that time to think. Balance is very, very important. And it's something that a lot of people do need to develop and understand that it is important to have both sides. It's important to have fun. And I think, uh, like what you were saying before, was that like, you worked worked a lot, but it was something that you loved. And so I think that's uh, that adds to this. If it's something that you love, it doesn't feel like work sometimes. So making sure that you're checking yourself, making sure that this is still something that you are loving and that you are into and that you want to do for the rest of your life. So I definitely thank you so much for touching on that because I think that is very, very important. I also want to uh, talk about some new things that might be coming up what is happening with you anything that you want to share I know you also said that you have a freebie that you would like to discuss and share with the people that are watching go ahead and share whatever it is that you want to discuss well the next thing that's coming up for me is really to expand media Mavericks mm -hmm. um, to you know reach more people mm -hmm. and one of the things that I am a big big proponent of is and it, I kind of just touched on it a little bit but one of my biggest philosophies is if you know you are the solution to someone's problem, if you know that you are sitting on, on uh, you are the answer to someone's prayer, there's someone that's losing sleep, there's someone who is stressed out by something you are sitting on the solution for, so you have a responsibility to make some noise about it. It is not the time to play small. It's not the time for you to be timid. It's not the time for you to be shy. When what you are sitting on, your expertise, your, your, your product, your book, it can be a game changer. You have to make some noise about it. And so that phrase, make some noise, is kind of the bedrock, the foundation of Media Mavericks Academy. And so in July, I did 30 days live training uh, what I call the make some noise fest. Mm -hmm. And as a result, people started owning their genius. People started understanding that it's not humility to just sit quiet and sit back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay 
to be clueless in one area and be a genius in the other. And when your genius is going to be a game changer in someone's life, you've got to make noise about it. And so I, I spent 30 days teaching this concept and as a freebie for your audience, if they go to IamANoiseMaker.com, IamANoiseMaker.com, you can get the first seven days of those videos absolutely free. We will and then the link to that in the description so that you guys can check that out. I okay, good. Because you click through. Continue. Good. And then uh, I think sometime in November, I'm going to teach a webinar on the seven secrets of getting massive media exposure. So if you go get the freebie, you uh, get that, it'll ask for your email address. And so when I do the webinar, it's going to be free. Uh, you'll be notified of that uh, as well. And we will make sure to link all of the, diff all, all the your website, first of all, the um, Media Maverick Academy. The website will be linked down the below. We'll mm -hmm. also make sure to they link... Can just start at, if the, the, to start the journey with me, just start at IamANoiseMaker.com. I don't like to confuse them. I am a noisemaker.com. Perfect. And is there any uh, social media that you want to share that you would like them to connect with you on? Start it. I am a oh, noisemaker. Okay. I like to keep it real simple and streamlined. If you hit I am a noisemaker.com, that's where you start with TJ. That's the first step to getting some TJ in your life. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. You shared some really amazing tips, and I hope that the young people and the parents that are watching have really been able to pull from this. And if you need to watch it over again, because this is a good video, I think that you will be able to watch and pull something new each time you watch it. So thank you so much, Ms. TJ, for joining me. And I wish you much success. Make sure that you guys check the links down below. Click, click I am annoyed. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, because I, I want to, I, I, when I always do interviews, uh -huh. I want to make sure I serve your audience. So I know that, you know, your audience is, you know, the kid entrepreneurs, but then you've got the momagers and everything who are looking for media exposure. Uh -huh. I want to give them just four quick things that when you're looking at doing media exposure, you have to take this into consideration. Uh -huh. Number one, when you are doing media, you have, and I call it the difference between a media wannabe and a media maverick. Okay. So a media wannabe shows up to promote what they're there to talk about. You're going to show up to promote your book. You're going to show up to promote your, 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 your jewelry line. But a media maverick looks at that opportunity as a way to serve. Mm -hmm. Producers are not interested in you promoting. Mm -hmm. Producers are only interested in how does whatever you have serve their audience. Mm -hmm. What is going to keep that audience from changing the channel? Mm -hmm. Number two, a media wannabe stays tuned to W-I-I-F-M-E. What's in it for me? That's it. That's all. That they, it's all about them. It's all about them. Right. Versus a media maverick shows up tuned into W-I-I-F-T-V, T-L-T-R. What's in it for the viewer? what's in it for the listener or what's in it for the reader. Mm -hmm. So no, no matter what you know platform of media you use, make sure you're toned in to what the audience needs. Mm -hmm. Number three, a media wannabe shows up without a strategy, but a media maverick shows up with a strategy that will get that viewer, get that listener from that screen, from the speakers to their website. Mm -hmm. There is an art to that. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned to that. Mm -hmm. And the final one is a media wannabe shows up to do an interview. Mm -hmm. But a media maverick shows up to have a conversation. Now, in just common vernacular, yeah, we'll call it an interview. Mm -hmm. But in your mind, you're showing up to just have a conversation. TJ just showed up today to have a conversation with Gabrielle. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so you flow a little differently when you're thinking about the fact that there's not a million people watching you. There's only Gabrielle and TJ. That's it. So your energy shows up differently. There's where you can take away the nervousness because I'm just looking to have a conversation. I like that's that one. It. I think that's really efficient for young people because I know a lot. I've reached a lot of young people, especially when going on stage, even um, and especially in, then in media as well, the, their minds are always thinking, oh, how many people are watching me? What if I mess up and everything? And I, exactly, it's so exactly. I think it's a conversation. You're just communicating. You don't have to be too scared. And then 
when you're not scared, then your nerves go away, and then the shakiness starts to go away, and it's <laughs> less likely to mess up. And I think that's that's definitely a really good one. I really like that one. Thank you for the added four points. That is that's those four are really fantastic, and we'll make. Sure I want to have make sure I serve your audience because a media maverick shows up to serve, not promote. Exactly. Thank you so <laughs> so much, Miss TJ. And you are very sure welcome, babe. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching another episode of Excel with Gabrielle. I hope that you enjoyed this interview with Miss TJ Mercer. Make sure to check the link down below, IamAnoiseMaker.com, to get the free gift she has for you today, and also to learn more about her and what she can do for you and your company. Of course, make sure to head over to ExcelYouthMentoring.com to subscribe to the Excel Youth Mentoring Institute so you can check out past interviews with industry leaders and young trailblazers. Also, don't forget that you can email me at excel at gabrieljordaninspires.com to send me any questions, comments, or concerns that you'd like me to discuss in my next video. And I hope that you'll join me next Sunday at 7 p.m. to learn, grow, and excel with Gabrielle. I will see you next time.